Age, height, and nationality are not factors of compatibility. What do you believe about settling? When you're thinking about a long-term relationship, you need to see how this person wins and how they lose. The meaning of marriage and long-term relationship has changed a little bit. I have a lot of clients that don't believe in marriage. They believe in long-term. Sometimes we see our clients going after the same type of person. Our job as matchmakers is to help them, like kind of like hold up the mirror mm -hmm. and be like, are you sure? Christiana, welcome to the Pulp Podcast. Thank you for having me. Christiana, so you are a, um, you have a matchmaking service here in Dubai, the Maxion. Uh, did I say it right? Maxion. <laughs> I've said it like three times. Yes. So I have my offline agency yes, for me. high net worth, ultra high net worth men. Uh -huh. That is not just here in Dubai, but it's global. And the app Maxion is a way for me to digitize those services and reach a much wider audience of accomplished professionals, successful individuals, not mm -hmm. just millionaires and billionaires. Okay, so your original, so the first business, which yes. is a matchmaking service, which is highly personalized and customized, yes. right? Mm -hmm. um, is that only catered to men? Yes. yes. So okay. many men are the paying clients right. for the agency and anybody, all women can join the database for free. Oh, lovely. Yes. Okay, great. So tell me, what do you think happened or what do you think <laughs> is you know the trigger maybe in your personal life mm -hmm. that kind of inspired you to start a matchmaking service yeah so I feel like I've lived eight different lives yeah. like I started my career in as an athlete mm -hmm. then I went into finance then I went into education became a published author leader in a school and during 2020 we just had more time on our hands mm -hmm. and I had created an Instagram account called dating in Dubai where mm. I was documenting my experience yeah. as a Western expat dating here. I love dating here. And, but what I learned from that account was that people hated dating in Dubai. 100%. <laughs> yeah, that sounds very familiar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I've always been a solution seeker. Yeah. And in all honesty, the most amazing people I have ever met have been living in the city. Mm -hmm. So driven, ambitious, successful, fit, cool growth mindset. And I was like, both men and women. Yep. And I said, I was like, you know what? These people are just missing one another. Yeah. I want to be the bridge that connects them. That's a such a good observation. You're looking at it from a, like, a macro uh, perspective, mm -hmm. vantage point, mm -hmm. I would say. So um, that's like kind of like the first step to it. And then what made you want to be like, okay, let's make this into a business? So when I first started it as a business, I actually kind of introduced myself as a dating manager. Okay. Where I would help you organize your dating life. Because what I saw here in this city in Dubai, right? We outsource our laundry. Mm -hmm. We outsource all of our meals, yep. right? Like we basically hire somebody. Delivery on point everywhere. Yeah. Exactly. We hire somebody else to take care of everything in our life. Mm -hmm. So I thought well, I can help people organize their dating life. Mm -hmm. And then that morphed into more of a matchmaking agency. Nice. And I started here in Dubai first. And the extreme demand of the business just proved to me that there was like product market fit. Like people wanted this. And we grew so quickly. I was in, gosh, I think by May, I was in over 40 media mentions. So like, mm -hmm. Four months into the business, I was in over 40 media mentions because I was technically like the first public Western matchmaker here. Yeah. So even before I started the business, I didn't even know if it was legal to do it. Oh, really? I had to consult okay. a heavy duty legal team. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, we need to go through all the laws. We looked at everything that had to do with prostitution, solicitation, yeah. everything all of to it. make sure that our contracts were airtight and that we were compliant mm -hmm. with UAE law. Okay. And yeah, then by month seven, I was already contacted by three different global matchmaking agencies that wanted to kind of like add the Middle East to their portfolio. Okay. I decided to join up with SYNC, C-I-N-Q-E. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of formed like this global agency where it's seven of us all over the world. Okay. I run Middle East and UK. Amazing. So it's like this mm -hmm. conglomerate now, kind exactly. of. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Let's go back a little bit to when you were kind of posting um, those questions on your stories. Okay. Yeah. And the information that you got, <laughs> the data points. Let's, talk, let's look at the yeah. data points a little mm -hmm. bit. What were men complaining about the most? Yeah. 
So men complain that all of the women in Dubai just want them for money. Okay. A lot of complaints about gold diggers, mm -hmm. a lot of complaints about working girls, okay. semi-pros, yep. all the lot. Uh, the everything, <laughs> everything. Yeah, <laughs> and um, definitely those do exist here. Uh -huh. Duh, I think that they exist in most metropolitan cities. Mm -hmm. But it kind of becomes this thing of if you keep doing the same thing over and over, you're going to get the same result. Mm. So why are you keep going to the same DIFC bars, the same West Beach bars? Why don't you put yourself in different environments, yep. do hobbies that you really enjoy that help elevate yourself, and then you'd be able to attract a more compatible person who has right. similar goals to you. Okay. And so that yeah. was the advice that you were like kind of, you're Which, giving them. Yeah, what yeah. I was giving. And when I first started the agency, like I said, I I know so many amazing people in this city, mm -hmm. but they're just missing one another. Yeah. For example, like your perfect match, like let's say you live in downtown, mm -hmm. right? And all you do is go out and DIFC. Mm -hmm. Maybe your perfect match is a chick who lives on the palm and surfs on the weekend. Like, I don't know, like something yeah. random like that. Right. But it's about putting yourself in different environments, having like the key success to a matchmaker is having a great database and a mm -hmm. great network, right? Mm -hmm. In order to basically deliver options of who could be a very good partner for you. And it sounds so, so. basic, but at the same time, it's like mm -hmm. people really don't have the time to do that because Correct. it's a busy life mm -hmm. that we live here. We're all, like you said, we're on, on work visas and we're yeah. staying at work for like eight, nine hours a day. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. those people are really struggling what about the females? What about the girls? What were they <laughs> What were they complaining about the most? I love hearing uh, this. So women complain that all men want is bedroom. Okay, <laughs> yep, yep. Only for like and a short time, good yeah, time. Yeah, they're here for a good time, not a long time. Yep. But another main reason why I opened up my agency in 21, this was right after like, well not right, <clears throat> yeah, but pandemic was over. The UAE started introducing visas like golden visas, right. work remote visas, mm -hmm. retirement visas, which really positioned Dubai really from being less of a transient city into more of a permanent place or home for people. So I was saying, wow, this is a great time and place to have a matchmaking agency mm -hmm. because what makes people stay relationships, putting down roots in a place, right? Building those friendships, building those romantic relationships, starting families. Mm -hmm. That's what makes people stay. 100%. And that's like kind of where it all just like the stars aligned and it was perfect timing to do so. That's a great way to think of it. That's really, it is really true because people mm -hmm. do stay for a relationship. They'll do, if mm -hmm. someone has a relationship worth staying for, they'll do anything. Definitely. Yeah. And also more and more <clears throat> I hear now, especially post 2020, People see Dubai as a home. Yeah. Before, like how, how long have you been here? I've been here for three years now. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then you came post 2020. Yeah. Yep. So I've been in the UAE. I came 2020 actually. Yeah. yeah 2020. Right before or right after? after? After, so after the, okay. like, so December 2020. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the good part. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. The good times. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> when I came here in 2016, mm -hmm. My first initial thought when I moved to Abu Dhabi was, okay, I'm going to stay here for two years. I had a partner at, at the time. Yep. Stay for two years, then we're going to move to London. Okay. Everybody else you speak to, oh, I'm here for two years and then I'm going here. I'm here for three years and I'm going here. Mm -hmm. More and more now, now I hear people saying, this is my fifth year. This is my eighth year. This is my 10th year. Dubai is my home. I'm staying here forever. Look at the rest of the world. Dubai is a new land of opportunity. And I believe that 1000%. 100%. I agree with you. Okay, let's talk about like, let's get a little bit um, into the nitty gritty of mm. the clients that you seek yeah. actually that for are sure. like, that are that are um, a good fit for the matchmaking service. Yes. What qualities do you think a man or woman should have in order to feel like, you know, this could really work for them? Like, are there certain mm. qualities? Cause I, you know, someone could say, hey, I really want a relationship, but their yeah. lifestyle is not aligning to what they're saying. There's a shoe for every foot. Okay. And I say that because every person is individual. I mean, there could be like an overarching theme, mm -hmm. but in what people want, their expectations, their standards, their goals, there is a match out there for them, right? Mm -hmm. And I believe that what you just need to be is honest in a relationship, mm -hmm. honest in what your expectations are, mm -hmm. what your goals are, because a true like major factor in compatibility or successful relationships is alignment. Yes. Do the two of you have the same goals? Like that and is do you a find huge that out? factor. That is a huge factor, but do you find that out like 
mm-hmm. before they're going into. So yes. everyone's writing this down and sending yes. it to the. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So for the uh, <laughs> offline agency, we work really closely uh, with our clients to figure out what their goals are what kind of uh, things that they're seeking in a partner. Mm -hmm. We learn more about them. We give them advice as to what we think would be a better match for them or a better fit. And then then we look at our database. We have over 40,000 people in our database worldwide that we then uh, cater, curate, choose who we think would be a good fit for our client. We then do all of like the outsourcing in terms of the interviewing, vetting, verifying, planning the date, booking the date, getting the feedback, managing the communication. It's down to the to the date planning. Yes. Yes. We do that for them. And that's the service that they're paying for. Right. Because a lot of our clients. Clients. We were just speaking about this in terms of like network. Mm-hmm. A lot of the clients that we have are entrepreneurs, right? They've started their own businesses. Right. Yes, we do get uh, sometimes lawyers. We have some corporate guys as mm-hmm. well as CEOs, but they're people who are used to outsourcing their life. Okay. And or maybe had their head down building a business and don't have a large group of friends, mm-hmm. don't have a large social network. And then that's why they employ us because we do have that network and database right. to supply what they're looking for. So it, the people should always be looking for like a long term partnership when they want to use your I service, mean, like right? because the service fee for the offline agency is very high. Mm-hmm. So like we start at 30,000 U.S., but we go up to 200,000 U.S. Oh, wow. Just depends on uh, what your search is. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the people that come to us are seeking something serious, something serious because, I mean, why else would you want to put an investment into that without having a real goal or I guess like target hundred percent or something end. worth like investing in, <laughs> yeah, right? Some like, like success, like a measurable success. hundred yeah, percent. Exactly. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. What do you think is, okay. I know that Dubai, uh, of course, a lot of cosmopolitan cities have this like unique essence of like, you know, cult, different cultural backgrounds, diversity, yeah. and that's what makes Dubai awesome. Um, but at the same time, it can actually be hard because mm. you're trying to match different back backgrounds, different cultures together. How do you deal with that challenge? So one of the reasons like, or one of the things I would always promote when I did have the Instagram account dating in Dubai was that Dubai is the best place to date in the world because you can date the entire map. Mm -hmm. You can date people from all walks of life, stages, ages, phases. And let's say you're a person that grew up in like a more homogeneous town where it's like you saw people, everybody looks the same, everybody acts the same, everybody's yep. same religion, same this, same that. Yep. When you move to a place like Dubai, you have the opportunity to actually find people or meet people that you could be truly compatible with. Cause you're like, wow, I can date somebody from India, from Pakistan, from Australia, from the Middle East right. and be like, oh, I'm actually more attracted to this type of uh-huh. person or these kind of traits, these qualities. Right. So I think it's great because then you can have different variety and you get to figure out what you actually like and what yeah. you're attracted to. But in terms of like, settling down yeah a lot of our clients they do date outside of their culture they date outside of their religion they do date outside of yeah those cultural norms yeah but maybe it's because we do live in dubai i was gonna say yeah that's i feel like people are just more open to it now and definitely and i feel like also maybe the the concept or the meaning of marriage and long-term relationship has changed a little bit you know Mm -hmm. people definitely looking for more than just like a provider and a nurturer like they're looking for more so i mean what do you think about that when you Mm -hmm. when you know in terms of um the evolution of marriage or the evolution of long-term partnership you know that i have a lot of clients that don't believe in marriage they believe in long-term committed relationships but they don't believe in marriage why do you think that so is? it's financial stuff okay, okay. And, and 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 i get that like okay. when you're extremely wealthy mm-hmm. right and signing that even prenups can't protect you sometimes so i i get that I aspect it. of it but then i actually had a very interesting conversation with a couple of my clients both of them billionaires okay and they said i would be so happy to sign a relationship agreement with somebody whoa what would that entail and, though yeah what would that entail what would that ha- how would it look different than a marriage <laughs> contract though well okay i'm gonna tell you yeah. exactly what it would look yeah. like he was saying or both of them because i met with both of them that they would love to be with a woman who would be the mother of their children. Okay. And because they wouldn't get married, they would love to sign an agreement that lets her know, 
I will take care of you and the family for the rest of your lives mm. and put down in paper, in writing, upheld in the court of law, mm -hmm. like what that looks like monetarily, yeah. what that looks like for boarding schools, mm -hmm. for private schools, this, this and that down the line, what it looks like for her, mm -hmm. because then you have that security in the relationship that probably a woman who, if her soul job quote unquote yeah. is to be a mother yeah. and a nurturer she gets that protection as well how is that different do you think from like a marriage contract well i mean when you get married are you putting down how much he's going to give you a month <laughs> i don't know i mean i don't know i've never been married but like i'm not sure <laughs> i'm not sure how it works but i think yeah. but i think with marriage contracts is mm -hmm. like you know, institutionalized kind of this is how each country works and da da da. Maybe mm -hmm. with a relationship agreement, it's more customized to each party's like needs, needs right? Yes. That would be. Yes. And I have been in relationships before where like we didn't like draw up a legitimate contract, mm. but we did speak and say, these are the things that I need in a relationship in order to feel fulfilled and secure. Mm -hmm. The other person did the same. We revisited it every six weeks to be like, okay, are we upholding both ends of our bargain? Okay. We want to keep doing this, stop doing this, yeah. start doing that. And I think that those are the best relationships when you look at it from more like a pragmatic standpoint and it's on paper, black and white, what are you providing? Meaning not just financially, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, it it's emotionally, 100%. it's physically, it's, it's time all of that also. support, yeah. all of that, mm -hmm. right? And then also being a person who knows what you want, yeah. what your expectations are, what your standards are, super important when you go into a relationship with somebody yeah for sure mm -hmm. so th that's really do you recommend people get a relationship yes. contract yeah okay, okay. <laughs> 1, one thousand percent. and you need to put in there a timeline of when you will be reviewing this the oh. both of you together to make sure that each of you is upholding your end of the bargain i mean how often should that be like a yearly thing uh, i would think sooner but you can't really? wait a whole year every six months <laughs> Forever? Every quarter would be amazing. Every it's it's like a quarterly ever. review. Jesus. Oh my God. This is, I, I love, love this. that. That would yeah. be amazing. I could like, just a check in. Just be yes. like, so how do you like feel a job. about it? It's a job being so, in a relationship. Feedback. It is. It's a like a, just cutting out time to yeah. cutting out time for It would feedback. be so funny if you got to write the feedback for the, That's your hilarious. Partner. Like, you send like, it listen, to last them in week. an email. <laughs> Last week, I would you love that, were actually. horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You left your socks in the bathroom. <laughs> I told you to stop doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you find is the most challenging part of running a business like this in terms oh, of mm -hmm. matching people? Like, yeah. yeah. So some of the things that happen is sometimes we see our clients going after the same type of person that they didn't find success with before in relationships. And we do our best okay. as matchmakers to kind of give them the flip side of the coin. Oh, I'm going to make up a name, Anna. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you sure, are you sure you want to continue seeing Anna? Because when we first spoke, you said you were seeking somebody who's more like Ashley. I'm just making up numbers, okay. or, uh, names right now. Um, and our job as matchmakers is to help them like kind of like hold up the mirror mm -hmm. and be like, are you sure? Because we believe that you would be better suited for somebody who is like X, Y, Z. So it makes our job so much easier when our clients say yes to uh. all different types of people, because what's very interesting about the service that we offer at Christiana Matching Solutions and mm -hmm. Sync is that we offer unlimited matchmaking opportunities during the time period of your membership, mm -hmm. which then allows you to say yes to as many people as you want. Right. Which is great because then you don't feel constricted mm -hmm. or maybe like, oh no, I'm going to use up my matches. Yeah. This gives you a better opportunity to find somebody that, mm -hmm. that you are actually truly compatible with. Okay. So you tend to say yes to people you maybe might not have said yes to before. Yeah. And then if you trust your matchmaker and you, you go on those dates and you go, oh, actually, I think it's going to work. You're like, Yes. You listen to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, trust the process, basically. Like, yes, just let the trust the process, please. <laughs> yes. So have you found that people who are like, for example, going on a lot of dates are kind of maybe addicted to the dating aspect of it? Rather oh, than, my gosh. That's, see, this is, I feel like, because a lot of my friends, um, I feel like that's the rut that they get into at some point because it's kind of becomes like a dating hobby. It's a game. It's a hobby. Yeah. It's like... So what I see a lot 
and my clients that I know are on the traditional dating apps with the swipe, 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 yeah. swipe, scroll, 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 mm. um, is that they demand a lot more profiles than other clients who are more in it for like the uh, quality over quantity. Okay. So I tell those clients mm -hmm. who are addicted to the swipe game, I say, stay on dating apps, do it because oh. they're obviously addicted to that. Right. Right. But let us do our job mm -hmm. in curating the experience for you and presenting you truly compatible people. Mm. What do you, so mm. you have the um, Maction app. Yes. How is that different from the other apps that people yes. are on? What I love about Maction is that anybody can apply to be on it, but we are extremely selective in who we choose to be on the platform. Okay. Because we look at your LinkedIn. Okay. We uh, look at your socials as well. And the, Platform is really for accomplished professionals, successful individuals. Mm -hmm. And there is no swiping on the app. Yeah. Every Sunday, we send you compatible profiles. You get to see their life goals, their personal values, okay. other information that we use for compatibility. It's completely up to you. Mm -hmm. Whether or not you say yes, maybe pass. You can see everybody who says yes to you. Mm -hmm. Everybody say maybe to. Everybody, pass. like you can see everything. Mm -hmm. But the best part about the app is that there's no messaging. Okay. Once it's a mutual connection, so two people saying yes to one another, yeah. our tech plans, books, and confirms the date, the in-person date. Okay. So you have to go meet the person. You have to go, but you're also a little bit, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you, there's not that much responsibility on you. You don't exactly. feel like there's that pressure. So you're mm -hmm. kind of like taking that away. And what I learned being mm -hmm. a matchmaker is that two people could be perfect for one another on paper. Or two people you'd be on the fence about. It's all about meeting in person. Mm -hmm. You need to see if you have a connection. Right. And when you're doing that whole looking at their social media, talking to them mm -hmm. hours on end, weeks, months, and never actually meeting in person. Red flag. You start, well, you also, you start building up this idea of them rather than the actual person. Right. You have no idea who they are. You're just making yes. things up from their profiles. Exactly. You start falling in love with their profile. Oh instead my of God. The actual person. This is like so AI future, mm -hmm. like craziness. Okay. Exactly. But then what if somebody doesn't have like an online presence? So we do have some people that have emailed us mm -hmm. and said, hey, I don't have a LinkedIn and I don't have that. Mm -hmm. So because we do have verified profiles inside our app, so you can verify yourself through EID or passport. Yeah. So that gives us a better understanding. Like, I think we've only accepted two people so far. I mean, we've been live for 11 weeks. Okay. But two people have emailed us and said, I don't have either. And then I just had one of our uh, memberships girls mm. get on an interview with them and like learn more about them to yeah. see if they were a good fit. What if somebody has, you know, relationship patterns, for example, like <laughs> um, I have a friend who recently went through a heartbreak mm. and- uh, I think I can see why things happen um, to this person and I can see a certain pattern happening. Have you told this person? I have. Good. I have. I you have. need to. I have. I have. But I don't think, I think it's a bit deeper than that. I think they need to help themselves with that situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But would you also, like as a matchmaking service, mm -hmm be able to see that at all or not really? Or is that something oh, yeah. they would provide, like information they should provide? So when when we are onboarding a potential client, they go through a four-step vetting process. Mm -hmm. So we ask them questions about past relationships. Okay. So why, do you, why do you think it didn't work out? And then as like, because gosh, we've been doing this for years, right? Like you can kind of figure out. Yeah. And then especially when they start dating, and you can see, and then for us, it depends because some of our clients want feedback. Some of right. our clients don't want feedback. Okay. And we ask, we're like, oh, do you want feedback? Some of them don't care. Some of yeah. them do care and they want to learn and be better. So it's just really up to them what type of membership they want. Do you um, like follow up with them after like a couple of weeks? Like, say, oh my gosh, of course. Yeah, like say yeah. two people are like, have gone on a couple of dates, mm -hmm. they like each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. We're always following up. Yeah. Because yeah, we want to see you have success with us. How long do you think people should date for to figure <laughs> out? <laughs> if I know this is so subjective, but yeah. um, to figure out if they are right for each other in the long term. One hour. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the first day you should know or see no like you said it's completely individual yeah i have been in relationships that have gosh i knew from the first time that 
we met that this was going to be a long-term relationship. Okay. I've also been in other relationships that have been a slow burn, mm. right? Mm -hmm. I think it depends on the stage, age, and phase of life you are in. Yeah. I have friends that are right now, like it's their mission because there are people who want to have a family. Right. It's their mission to find their long life partner, mm -hmm. get married and start a family. So they're completely focused on that. But what I tell them is what you should be focusing on are the qualities that you see as a good father, good mother, good partner. Mm -hmm. Focus on that in the search for your ideal partner because that is your goal, right? Right. Then there are other people who maybe they don't have children in their future. That's mm -hmm. not something, a goal, or maybe it's in the long distance yeah. future, right? Okay, so then what qualities are you seeking in this partner that would make you feel secure and fulfilled? Oh, so that's good. Yeah, that it's breaks different. it down a little mm -hmm. bit more and it makes mm -hmm. it a bit more nuanced rather than being like, oh, I just need to find somebody who's going to have my babies, basically. Like, that's not going to work. You, if you think go about it. in it that way, you're going to end up with the wrong partner. Yeah. Because then what? So you're just looking for a fertile myrtle? Yeah. Like, sure. <laughs> cool. Like, fertile that's. Myrtle. Yeah. But it's like, then what comes after that? Yeah. What 100%. people do a lot in relationships is that they're always looking at the short side. Mm -hmm. And that, I guess, what do they call that? Like short-term gratification? What do they call it? Um, I don't know. Like, yeah, I guess it's short-term gratification. Yeah, it's so like, something like like that easy, like high, short essentially. Sweet, like, yeah, yeah, okay, I got they're, it. They're just looking at the short side yeah. rather than the long-term, mm -hmm. I guess, effects of okay. what that short will bring. <laughs> got it. Like got it. in this moment gratification uh -huh. rather than okay, what kind of a partner could this person be? Mm -hmm. Could we build a life together? Yeah. What values are you attracted to in this person rather than physical traits? Okay. I'm going to ask you, I'm <laughs> going to ask you a true or false. Okay. No. True or false. Um, should it feel easy to date somebody and feel like this is the right, like the right person for you? I say yes. You think it should be? Yeah. yeah, because in all honesty, when it's hard in the beginning, you have to think about life. Mm. Life has ebbs and flows, highs and lows, ups and downs. And I remember, gosh, I, I, I'll i say one of the relationships I was in. This person was amazing yeah. because we were together when they were like on a high. They were winning at work, okay. winning in life, killing it in the gym, this, this and that. One bad thing happened to them, like kind of like a left turn in their life. They mm. completely crumbled. Ooh. When you're thinking about a long-term relationship, you need to see how this person wins and how they lose. Okay. How do they deal with adversity? Is that compatible with how you deal with right. adversity? And or can you respect the way that they cope? That's and a good point. Yes. That's a good point. So that's something that you need to consider mm -hmm. when you're looking for a long-term partner. Okay, I have another true or false for you. Go! Okay, so two people are on a date, met organically or mm -hmm. met however, whatever, um, and they want to know what each other wants. Should, yeah. should, I mean, I don't know whose job it is to like say what they want first, but should they say, hey, I want this amount of kids, this amount of, or is it too soon? <laughs> <laughs> because I know like Arab culture is different than yeah. other cultures. I feel like, because I'm Arab, so I know how it is when you go on an, a date or something. You, you you're you trying to, not to waste time. You're trying not to waste time. Mm -hmm. So tell me, do you want to have kids mm -hmm. or you don't have kids? So this is, yeah. I think this, I truly believe that most men are fuck boys until they meet the right woman. Uh, okay, I'm going to say that. Okay. But a great way to answer this question on a first date, remember you don't know this person yet, mm -hmm. right? Do you really want to tell them your deepest, darkest secrets Actually, or what yeah. like your real expectations mm -hmm. are? Not, not like you're hiding it from them, but I always believe that somebody needs to earn information from I you. believe the same. They need to earn it. Yeah. But a great way to answer that question is to say, oh, well, I'm open to any opportunity, but my ultimate goal is marriage and family mm -hmm. if, if that is your ultimate goal yeah, you can yeah. always phrase it like can, that yeah. my ultimate goal is blank blank got it okay. i think that that answers the question best. that does that yeah no, mm -hmm. i know i feel like this it, it's very clear for everyone got it guys you guys <laughs> do you guys understand <laughs> in your experience mm -hmm. what do you think are the factors that contribute to a long-term 
um, with, you know, a, a long-term relationship, a healthy relationship where two people are thriving. Well, can I say that age, height, and comp- <laughs> what was it? Age, height, and nationality are not factors of compatibility. I, like I just want to say that. Just remove those. Off the bat. Get them off the table. <laughs> but compatibility has to do with values mm-hmm. and goals. Okay. Do you align on values and goals? Mm-hmm. And you need to think about this person as not just like, it's n- not a relationship. This is a partnership right. in life and partnerships, like whether it's business, friendship, romantic, you need to think about the compatibility in that when it comes to emotions, mm-hmm. intellect, financial, romantic slash physical. Yeah. You need to think about all those different factors. And I'm not saying that you need to be 100% in all of your love tanks. Yeah. But you need to know which love tanks that you have that need to be full or 80% plus. And you need to understand those Mm -hmm. and also like love tanks, love languages, however you want to phrase it. Yeah. Because you want to be fulfilled in relationships. And to be completely open about that with your partner in how you show love and how you receive love not saying you have to be a carbon copy of one another, Mm -hmm. but to be able to have those open conversations about, okay, this is what makes me feel the most secure, the most loved in a relationship. How about you? Yeah. And then making sure that you're doing that for that partner, if you actually truly care. Yeah. hundred percent. So, uh, people say that you shouldn't settle. Okay. And (laughs) I believe that you are going to have to settle, but it depends on what you settle on. Right. Correct. So (laughs) what do you believe about settling in relationships? Firstly, yeah, the man should always love the woman more. Okay. (laughs) Okay. You need to be with a man that loves you more. Okay. Tell me why. Because we do hear this, but I need to know why. Okay. Every single successful relationship, marriage, partnership that I've seen, Mm -hmm. the man holds the woman on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. He's scared to lose her. Mm -hmm. I, that's my observation mm-hmm. and my observation as a matchmaker as well. Okay. Should people settle? Oh yeah. <sighs> or when Settling. should they settle? I when hate, should- I hate that word settle. But what I will say is that you are never going to find a hundred percent of everything you want, mm-hmm. desire in a person. You need to find that in yourself. Yeah. Okay. Because only you can control your happiness. Beyond that, finding 80% of those standards, expectations that you have in somebody, that's amazing. Oh my God, 80%. Then you get to build the other 20 together. Right. Because I always like to say that the best relationships that I've seen, both parties come as two whole people Mm -hmm. separately. Best case scenario. One plus one equals three. Mm -hmm. Then you get to build more and more together. Amazing. When you're coming into a relationship seek or with a void or a hole, seeking somebody else to fill that, mm-hmm. you're always going to be let down. 100%. You cannot control other people. Because the other person has their own moods, their mm-hmm. own letdowns from themselves, things that have nothing to do with you at the end of the day. And so, they're not necessarily trying to hurt you yeah. or trying to not be that person for yeah. you, but you need to be that person for yourself. So instead, I would say, don't settle for anything less than 100% from you. You, you, you. Be okay. your 100% best self. Okay. We're going to play a game. Ah. Okay. It's called <laughs> Red Flag, Green Flag, which I also yeah! play with Sonia, but I think it's yes, fun. Good. Red Flag, Green Flag. Okay. So uh, Red Flag, Green Flag, going on a coffee for your first date. Red. Why? <laughs> coffee is cheap. <laughs> Okay. Coffee is cheap. This is not a business meeting. Like if I am interested in somebody like romantically, Mm -hmm. how sexy can you get dressed up for a coffee? Not. It also implies that it is a short meeting and I don't have time for that. You either invest time to meet with me one-on-one to figure out if we have some kind of connection or not. But can I just counter that? I'll play the little devil's advocate. What if you are invited to like a dinner date and you decide that it's just not it? Okay. Do drinks. Or drinks or whatever. But then yeah. you have to sit through the entire hour or two. But then the coffee is just like, whatever. Be like, I'm I have, gonna I have half an hour left. Solution. Okay. I call this hedging. Yep. Hedging and dating. Always set up 
drinks to meet with somebody, like let's say it's the first time, mm-hmm. have a dinner lined up straight after with girlfriends or guy friends, friends oh. or an activity, whatever that you're doing. Cause then you're not wasting an outfit. Yep. You're not wasting makeup. <laughs> That's such a good point. So drinks and there's a timeline. <laughs> right. And the timeline then kind of gives you that escape. Oh, I have something to do at eight mm-hmm. or I have a dinner at eight. And or so like gives you that that escape. Yeah. But then also it kind of like if you're having an amazing day and you leave at eight, it keeps them wanting more. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. So I like hedge that. all your dates. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Red flag, green flag. Saying I love you after a month of dating. Green. Green flag? Okay. Boys fall far. Yeah. Boys fall fast. Yeah. And hard. When I'm in love with them. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I'm in love with my parents, so it makes sense. <laughs> Okay, um, green flag, red flag, going on a date with someone your friend may have gone on a date with, but it didn't work out with them. Totally fine. Totally fine. Totally fine. Okay. I don't see, and like, as a matchmaker too, I think I brought this up the other day. Mm-hmm. I was saying that some of the girls um, that we, I guess, reach out to for like some of our clients, they might say, oh, my friend went on a date with him or something like mm-hmm. that. And I'm like, okay, how many dates? Like, did they have like a real relationship? Are you, how close are you to this mm-hmm. person? Da, 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 da. Oh no, just one date and it didn't work out. I'm like, so why are you then closing off the opportunity to meet an amazing person yeah. over something so silly? Yeah. Trivial. Like, did, did, they didn't even kiss. Like, I, I agree. Oh, yeah. I agree. I, I yeah. Just it because shouldn't. this person isn't a match for them, they could be a great match for you. 100%. People are different and they have. Totally. Um, Okay, this is a tricky one. Mm-hmm. What if what is a green flag that could possibly be a red flag? Mm. Could take some time to think about that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's a green flag? <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like I have changed so much mm-hmm. in my life. Like I've created. I don't know. Gosh, I've had such an evolution living in this city, which I love. Yeah. A major green flag for me used to be like a nine to five, like finance guy. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, so turned on by founders. Like I want somebody who's like an entrepreneur because that's who I am. Because that's how you are. Yeah. And that's how I could like relate to them Mm -hmm. too. So I think that, yeah, people's occupations, like for some people, it might be a green flag. For some other people, it might be a red flag. Okay. And you should probably have an idea in mind of what you want to go for, or you should just kind of keep it, keep it as a blank canvas. I think you should be open yeah. to different things, mm-hmm. right? Go yeah. try it out. Mm-hmm. But then also like for me and what I've experienced, like I know now I can never be with somebody who works in corporate. It just yeah. wouldn't work for me. No, now. you've tasted the freedom of entrepreneurship exactly. now. Like you're I mean, freedom. I work 25 <laughs> eight. But I was gonna say that working 24 uh, seven. I know. For- it's more of like a mindset. Like I like somebody who's like building something. Mm-hmm. Like um, I met a guy recently who has a nine to five, mm-hmm. but he's also built two other businesses on the side. Okay. Like I like that. That entrepreneurial spirit that mm-hmm. I'm gonna build something. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing that. Like having their hand in like a couple different pots. Like okay. I like that a lot. But it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to ask you the opposite. What is a red flag that could actually be a green flag? Body count. Oh, really? Okay, what is, I'm going to tell can, you. How can that be a, a I'm gonna green tell flag? You. Yeah, okay. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that the number of people that you sleep with has nothing to do with who you are okay. as a person or uh, kind of like how you're going to treat your future partner in the sense of, have you ever heard of those stupid Facebook groups? That's like, are we dating the same person? Are we dating the same guy? And it's like a Facebook group where girls just dog on all the guys that that they've dated. Oh, this guy is an asshole. Oh, he ghosted me. Oh my God. I dated him too. He's such a jerk. Whatever. Right. I think that those groups should be burned down. I think that they're terrible because let's say you and I go on a date with the same guy. Uh Okay. He doesn't like me. He ghosts me, never talks to me again. Mm. And then he's really into you Mm -hmm. and he treats you like a princess, puts you on a pedestal, does everything and everything for you, makes you feel like a queen, right? Right. It's the same person. Same person. Just because he treated me poorly doesn't mean that he's going to treat everybody else poorly. Right. Right. And like I said before, I do believe that most men are fuck boys till they meet the right woman. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. That's a good way to put it. Yep. Yes, that, but in terms of body count, yeah. I actually think higher the body count, I mean, maybe this is going to be bad. I might get canceled. <laughs> higher the body count, maybe the better you are in bed. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. So for I'm me- okay for with men that. or for women? Are we talking about both. for both? Okay. Well, there shouldn't be a double standard. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I want to hear what has been one of your favorite success stories with the matchmaking app. Okay. Yeah. With the app or, oh or my God. matchmakers, or I'll, whatever you want. I'll tell you both. I'll yeah. tell you both. What I love about the agency is that you really become so invested mm-hmm. in your clients because you know so much about them. Yeah, you hear yeah. their feedback. You know exactly what they're looking for. You get so excited when you help them achieve their goal, right? Yeah. So the best ones, I mean, the ones that warm my heart the one, the most is uh, put them on the first date and then they're in relationships. Yeah. We have clients that are married, about to have babies. And this is the first person that we put them on a date with. Like, it is amazing. Really? Yes. And how long, like, were they dating for? Where is it like uh, so long- now this couple, almost two years. Wow. Almost two years at this point. Okay, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. And then we have other couples that, gosh, it was the first date and they're still seeing one another. They're older, so yeah. they're not going to have any children. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but from the app. What I love about Maction is that we're actually creating real connection for people because yeah. we're facilitating the whole first meeting, mm-hmm. right? Actually getting you on in-person dates with people, collecting that feedback and yeah, just curating the whole process for you, right. which is not seen on other apps. Yeah, You yeah. can swipe and talk to people for months and months and months and never meet them. Like it's crazy. Yes. But we already have four couples. And I'm so excited because one of the first couples that we created on Maction was actually at our launch party. Oh, no way. So we did a launch party on the 4th of December. Uh Uh-huh. Sorry, two couples. Two couples from the launch party, 4th of December at Aura Sky Pool. And that was like when we just launched on the App Store, but then we had to do a lot of tech stuff. So we didn't publicly launch until Feb 4. Mm. And when we launched in the month of February, we have one couple... From month of February, one couple from the month of March, right? Keep in mind, like we're starting off slow. So we only have about 400 people on the app right now that we've accepted, but 1300 on the waiting list. And what's amazing is that both of these people, it was the first date we put them on. Oh, wow. Yay. So exciting. Great. So exciting. Was there ever a story where like, uh, you know, maybe it wasn't going to work out and then they turned around and they were like, actually, let's. And yes. then they were dating their days. Yes. Yeah. So in the matchmaking agency, we have, and this is what I was saying before about trusting the process mm-hmm. and being open. Because I have a lot of clients where I say, you should go on a date with, I'm going to make Alex. You need to go on a date with Alex. Okay. And, oh, I don't know. She's not really my type, blah, 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 blah. Go on a date. You have unlimited dates. Mm-hmm. So why not? Just put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. Go on a date with Alex. Oh my God. She was amazing. Wow, she's so much more dynamic. I'm like, yes, because you can't read a person on a piece of paper yeah. or even on a profile. Like people are 360. Yep. People are 3D. People are human. Like you need to meet them in person. Like what you said, people have already kind of made up their mind before seeing the person. And that's kind of just that that's wrong. Like you shouldn't. But that's kind of the world that we live in now. Yeah. With the whole dating app culture, the traditional dating apps is that we are judging people from a flat profile and what you need to know too is that good guys don't know how to take photos of themselves (laughs) they really don't (laughs) so that's why i love maction because inside the profile everybody's profile is black and white okay so you we kind of like force you to meet them in person in order to see them in color Oh, that's a good way to think of it. Smart. Yes! That's so smart. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And the feedback that we get about not just like the functionality of the app, but the yeah. quality of people that we have. People go, these people live in Dubai. I'm like, yes. Yeah. They're just maybe in a different neighborhood. They're probably just like at home working or something or doing that's other it. stuff that you don't Building think. Building a business. Building their lives. Exactly. So I, I like what Maxion is doing because it does take you away from this like app culture, you know, yeah. fast and whatever, like, you know, fast mm-hmm. dates and stuff like that. And I feel like it's kind of the oldest form of finding like suitors mm-hmm. right yeah. like matchmaking is such an old profession that Definitely. like people have kind of just forgotten about because there's everything so digital but now yes. you've kind of you've done both yeah what i love is that we're changing the game mm-hmm. when it comes to what traditional dating apps offer and 
just creating connection. Like yeah. my next move, I cannot wait to be in KSA. Cannot wait to be across the GCC. Yeah. I we have plans to open up our Indian connections portal. We have plans to open up our Muslim marriages portal. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to make expat dominated cities in the GCC mm -hmm. feel more like home. And that's all we care about. Amazing. <laughs> and those are great words to end by. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Christiana, yes. thank you. That was amazing. Um, okay, let's say people now watching want to yes. get in contact and they want to find somebody. Yes. What should they do? So if you're looking for the elite matchmaking agency, mm -hmm. go to christianamaction.com. Mm -hmm. And if you want to join Maction, please, M-A-X-I-O-N, find us on the App Store. We will be launching Android soon, yes. but please find us, download, apply, and I hope to have you on soon. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> okay, guys, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, and comment in the space below because we want to hear your feedback. Yay! Yes. Tell us. <laughs> <laughs>